This is July 13th, 2018. We are in Bedford, Massachusetts at the Edith North Rogers Memorial Veterans Hospital. And this tape is part of the Morris Institute Library's continuing Veterans Oral History Project. My name is Jim Ramsey. Our camera person is Maureen Sullivan. And we're privileged to have with us today Ferdinand Lucantoni, who prefers to be called Fred. So we'll call you Fred from now on, okay? Okay. May I ask when you were born, Fred? 1921. And where were you born? Woburn. Woburn, Mass. Massachusetts. And where do you currently live? Well, Fred, Fred lives in, actually. Where I live now? Well, I'm, I lived in New Hampshire with my daughter after uh, the family disappeared. And um, now I'm in the uh, hospital in Bedford, Massachusetts. Great. Because I'm 97 years old and I can't ha my daughter can't handle me. 97. Uh, Congratulations. Thank you. Fantastic. So, uh, are, are, are you or were you married? Was I married? Yes, I was married for 47 years. Wow. Wow. And do you have children? Yes. How many children? I had three children, two boys and a girl. And do you have grandchildren? Grandchildren, five. Wow. Three boys and two girls. And do you have great-grandchildren? No. No great-grandchildren. Okay. Okay. So t <clears throat> uh, tell me what it was like growing up in Woburn, Mass. Very, very, oh, very strange. I had to work as a boy. I had to go do a lot of work because it was during the Depression. And we were, my parents came from Italy and they had nothing. And we had to do, go, everything we did, we had to do by ourselves. We had to get our own coal, cut down our own wood. Hmm. You know, it was really bad them days. Wow. 1932, I think, 1930 and on. Right. But you made it through. Well, yes, we did. The whole family. There was eight of us then. So four you... boys and four girls. Wow. My mother had 12. Four died, two at birth, and one at birth, the third at birth, and one in, died of a toothache. Huh. But them days, they didn't have a, a dentist, I guess. Right. Wow. Now we ended up at eight. Eight of you. Wow. And you went to, did you go to public school in Woburn? Yes. I went all the way through the third year, and then the third year we moved to Boston because my dad uh, found a place in Boston much cheaper than where we were, and, and, and the boys could work. Even I got a job there on Colonial Provision. Now, how old were you at that time? Uh, 17. Wow. Wow. So where and when did you enter the military? Oh. Was it in Boston? Huh? In Boston? Oh, yes. And, yeah. you, and were you drafted? Yes. And when was that? Well, I was drafted in the North End, and I went to Fort Devens in, the, in Ayers. Right. Was that where you had basic training? No, we just, that's the, uh, an area where they assemble the people. Yes. And separate them and put them on a train and sent us away. Where did they send you? Texas. Was that for basic training? Yes. How did you enjoy your time in Texas? My traveling. Did you enjoy your time in Texas? The. Uh, Did you like Texas? Oh yeah. Good. It was a lot of fun until we went on our first maneuvers <laughs> in Louisiana. <laughs> Louisiana. Okay. Yeah, we traveled from Texas to Louisiana, for we're gonna have a, 
uh, learn how to the, the weather there has been awful, you know. Right. So I was in charge of the uh, uh, the, the the people that eat that when they when they when they don't finish it, they have to dispose of it. Well, I was in charge to make sure they made a big, big hole enough for the, so we have to cover everything. We don't want to leave nothing behind. Right. And as I uh, the next morning, I woke up, I was completely blind. I couldn't see nothing. And I yelled out, hey, I can't see. So uh, one of the guys said, what's the matter? See, I don't know, my eyes are... And he says, holy God, holy, you look terrible. You look like a balloon. My face was round. I must have contacted some uh, vapor from some vine or something, you know? Mm -hmm. So they got me in the ambulance, put me, took me to the hospital. And they treated me at the hospital for 12, 11 days. And, and then on the 12th day, my, my first sergeant, Erickson, he came to, he came to the hospital and says, well, Mr. Lugatone, I come down and say goodbye. I said, what do you mean? We're going to be shipped out. And what about me? He says, I don't know. Are you, are you able to come with us? You bet your life I don't, I'm coming with you. Oh, Christ, you know, I took all my basic training with you people. And you're gonna leave me here? Oh no, I'm coming. He said, Well, we gotta to talk to the captain. And he was Italian, thank God. Because <laughs> I'm Italian. <coughs> and, I, and we got to talking. He says, All right, you do what I tell you, okay? Yeah? And he gave me some medication and, and he took care of it. And off we went to New Jersey. We, 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 we loaded a train and back to New Jersey. And on the, the New Jersey, we load, we, I don't know if I should say this, we got on the uh, Queen Mary. The Queen Mary? Queen Mary. We went across the ocean four days. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty fast. Yeah, what they did to the Queen Mary, they, they stripped it right down. All the furniture, the rooms, they made all bunks. 22,000 soldiers on that trip. And thank God there was no submarines. But I was up on deck and I could see how the boat was going, you know, uh, it was amazing. Oh, gee, it was exciting, actually. And we landed in North Wales. North Wales? Yes, we stayed there for about two months. And, and we, I, did a, we did a lot of practicing, drilling, and then we were shipped down to uh, beyond, just beyond London and then to the waterfront and, and loaded on barges. <coughs> were you part, uh, were you with a unit at that time? Pardon? What unit were you with at that time? 733rd Field Artillery. Okay, okay. Yeah, but I think the guns were on a different ship. They were already, I think the guns were already there. And we, we, we the, the personnel came in last. When we landed, it was a Utah beach. At Utah. which which beach? Utah. Utah. Yeah. In in where? In France. And when? About when was this? When? When? Twelve days after the invasion. So that was 1944. Mm-hmm. No, 43. Was the invasion in 40? The 43 was the. I think no, the. I can't remember. I think the invasion was 19... Uh, fourth, yeah, then, yeah. yeah. Okay, sometime around the middle of 1944. Uh-huh. Okay. So you came in uh, as part, or 12 days after the invasion. Mm-hmm. And what happened then? Oh, we, we went, we traveled through France. We went all the way through France. And then we were, then they, we, we, they had us, we stopped, we couldn't go any further. So one morning, we looked up in the sky, all you could see was airplanes. Hmm. Oh, thousands of them. Every plane I think we owned was up in the air. And they got up to St. Louis, France, and they dropped their bombs. Hmm. You couldn't believe oh. the sight. Oh my God, a million bombs all at one time. And it leveled the town. 
St. Low, level up right. You could, you, you, you could see one end to the other. And the only thing I saw, uh, uh, well, I don't know if I should tell you, a human being body cut right in half. Mm. From here, he was sitting down. It was awful. And then they are taking the bodies and the trauma on a, uh, a eight by eight truck and just throw them in a ditch and burn them. Is the reason that they, they were bombing because the Germans had occupied St. Lo? They had to stop, yes. We couldn't go any further because they have a lot of uh, hedges. Uh, oh, every, every guy had a, had a hedge. Well, I forget what to call them. Uh, but the hedges are so thick, you can't see through them. And it all they, we, we, when the first ones went through, they all got killed on account of the uh, machine guns and things. So we held back. And that's when they started the bomb. And then after that, we traveled almost all the way into Germany. They, at the uh, Rhine River in France, uh, they took the gas away from Mr. Patton because he was going too fast. He was way ahead of everybody because of no resistance that way where we were with the southern part. Now, you were part of Patton's Third Army? Huh? You were with Patton's Third Army? Oh, yeah, yes. 26th Division. And you were, at that time, what, what was your job? Machine gun. You were a machine gunner? Yeah. Okay. Yep. I was the, any aircraft, you know, watch for planes. And I also had the machine gun for the ground. And I had uh, <clears> three <throat> men with me. Two carried ammo, and one carried the uh, uh, the big ammo, the uh, 50 caliber, about eight inches long. Wow! And the and the uh, that's the uh, big gun, and the uh, machine gun he only has uh, <coughs> 30 calibers. Okay. They're smaller. What was your rank at the time, corporal? Corporal. So, did you finally get to St. Lo? Oh, yeah. We, we, they, <laughs> you, <laughs> if you were there, you wouldn't believe it. All of us were piles of rock, debris. We had to wiggle our way. To, we had a couple of uh, bulldozers to make the clear the way for the trucks because the whole town was on the ground. Wow. It was unbelievable. I'm telling you, what a sight. And it gives you the jitters. We were all nervous. You know, you see, with all the people, oh, God knows how many died. So what happened next? Well, we just passed. Uh, there was hardly any resistance because the Germans pulled back. They went all the way up to the Rhine River. They all went up to the Rhine River. Patton was going so fast, they took the gas away from him because he has a tank. Oh, they took the gasoline? From way his, from Patton. So the tanks couldn't go anywhere. So he couldn't go any closer. <laughs> he was going, he wanted, let me tell you this, he wanted to capture uh, Berlin by himself. Of course, the Russians were on the other side. He wanted to beat the Russians. Wow. So Patton, uh, Eisenhower took away the gas. And okay. we, we stayed on the Rhine River <clears throat> two weeks. So you were, on, you were on the west side of the Rhine River? It, well, before, yeah. Well, the, the, the Rhine River's in front of us. It, it divides France and Germany, yes. right? Oh, okay. So you were still in France? I was, we were in France, yeah. So did he finally get gas? Uh, Fifteen days after, when the Russians took over Germany. <laughs> okay. Okay. So once he got his gas, then what happened? What? What happened next? The next? Yeah, where did you go next? Well, let me see. Let me think now. This is what? Take, take your time. You get all the time in the world. This is the, geez, this is the complicated now. Now, uh, the Germans took over. Uh, the Germans lined up, uh, I don't know if I should say this, but I'm going to tell you anyway. The Germans lined up 200 tanks 
back of back of uh, Baston to Battle of the Bulge. They're going to make another attempt to break through. And we've, and we've got wind of it. And what else? Oh, so, wait. so you were, so you were in Bastogne, and uh, was this in the Ardennes forest? Oh, I was in the Ardennes forest. I was in uh, three, four forests of different, different ones. Okay. And matter of fact, that, and, and that's when I got a wounded here, and a, and a wound here, from shrapnel. Uh, okay. And then we got to the uh, and, uh, the Ardennes. I got the hole in the head. From shrapnel. You got it injured. You got it, shrapnel in your head. Yes. And what 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 happened to you then? Did, did well, you? Well, the good thing there was a, uh, a medic there. He put uh, a sulfur or something on, on my on my right in the hole. And it and it, <laughs> man, oh man! No, I never thought I I lived that day to talk about it. Well. Took me to the hospital. They cleaned me up nice, and a week later, I'm back in the line. <laughs> wow. One week. One week. So and how that, uh, how did you feel then? Huh? How did you feel? I felt terrible. I said, I was I was scared, real, real scared that I was gonna die. And the doctor said, "Don't you worry, kid. You're doing good." He says, "You can go back to your unit." I said, "What?" He said, nothing we can do now, just let it, leave it alone, don't touch it, it'll heal. And sure as heck, I come home, I got a hole in my head. <laughs> it's still there? Still there. Okay. Want to feel it? Uh, huh. Well, there it is. Wait a minute. Okay. You, you got it? No. So my chair. Well, it's there somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's about the size of a nickel. Oh, here it is, right there. Okay. Let's see. Oh yes, yes. Yep. With all that hair, I guess. <laughs> well, I guess you survived it. So I went back. I went back to the uh, line. Uh, now, let me think. Yeah, they, they, they went to a different outfit, though. Well, because my outfit disappeared. I went to, uh, oh, I can't remember. That's okay, but you went to a di different outfit. Well, it doesn't matter, I'll tell you why. The Germans, we found out that the Germans lined up 200 tanks above Bristol. And they're going to try to break through. So right. they, they, they called all the personnel that didn't have anything, to, the rear personnel, even myself, as I sick as I was. We all, we went down to a, a certain town for practice, and they gave us a, a gun with, a, with the bayonet. One half hour drill, and that was it. Never used the bayonet. And... Uh, And then the, the Germans broke, came through. And it, it got to a point where, oh gee, terrible. I thought they were gonna run over all of us. But somehow, uh, they had, they, I don't know if they ran out of gas or something, I'm not quite sure, but we stopped them. Right. And it's a good thing we did. Yeah, you, you don't know what happened next. The, the whole world don't know. We never told anybody, and I can't even tell you now. It's a secret. Oh, that time we have President Truman. He took over Roosevelt, because Roosevelt died, remember? Yep. So he ordered uh, uh, the atomic bomb. Just then, they dropped the bomb on Hiroshima. Oh, what a mess. And then he got ready to drop another one. He dropped another bomb on uh, another state, city, big city. Nagasaki. Huh? 
Nagasaki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they surrendered. The Japanese? Everybody, yeah. And the war ended right there. And did, and, and did Germany surrender about the same time? Huh? Did Germany surrender? Oh, yeah. About the same time? Yes, everybody. Yes. yes. Germany was already dead. They had nothing. They were all prisoners. Japan, uh, I mean, uh, Russia had a million prisoners. <laughs> He's marching the, the prisoners down the road. I couldn't believe they had so many left. Then, uh, so I was, I was, uh, I forget the hell I was. Well, anyway, uh, we, they, they got us together, and we went to Czechoslovakia for two weeks. To yeah. After after the Battle of the Bulge? After the Battle of the Bulge. Okay. They sent us to Czechoslovakia to uh, be, you know, clean up, get all your things ready, your truck, your, your vehicle, your equipment, clean up, take a break. We were there for about two months. After two months, we got the word we to get, we're going to go to France, uh, where they, well, France, uh, famous port. What's the famous port? Um, La, Le, he, La Havre? No. Yeah, La Havre. Huh? La Havre is, La Havre is a port in France. Yeah, we're going to board a ship and go to, you never guess. No, what, where? To Japan, to, to the, the to Japan? East. No, east, to the east shore. Because we were fighting the, the Vietnam, uh, North Korea, and something else. That we had to go over there and help them. Oh, I see. And, and just before we take off, that's when he went, when Truman dropped the bomb. Right. And we held up, we were on the boat. Uh, uh, down they have. We're all on the boat, ready to go. Huh. And he says, "Hold up!" And we didn't. We didn't even move. So we were saying, "What the? Hell? What's 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 going on?" So they finally told us that the, the war is over. Wow! And they shipped us home. Fourteen days to cross the Atlantic Ocean. Four days over, but fourteen days. We went right, we went, we were in the Mediterranean. We went by the rock of Gibraltar. We hit the Atlantic. All hell broke loose. Jesus, I could see waves oh. so big. The Mediterranean was like a sheet of glass. Yes, yeah. But after the, after the uh, rock of Gibraltar, a few miles out, uh, I couldn't believe it. I'd be looking down about half a mile, then you'd be my, half a mile up in here. It was unreal. Fourteen days and we couldn't do nothing. Couldn't eat, couldn't sleep, couldn't, all we had to do was lay down and, and, and we all got kind of, a lot of sores around our body and everything. So when they got, when we reached New Jersey again, and on the, on the microphone, uh, he says, <clears throat> there was all, reading off all the names and mine was there too. He said, all you guys that I named, I stay on the board. Don't leave the boat. What the hell now? You know, what's the matter? Of course, I had all these souls all over me. Yes, no food. yeah. 14 days, no, no food, no, just lay down. So we, we got, they, they put us on uh, uh, ambulance, and they took us to the hospital. And they in, were checking in New for, Jersey? Huh? In New Jersey? In New Jersey, who? And where? Where were the hot? Where? Where did you land? Where did the boat come in? Uh, New Jersey. Yeah, sorry. Good. Yeah. Right. Got it. Yeah, we went right back, right, right back where we started from. Right. But I don't know where the heck we went to the hospital, and uh, they said, and they said, all nurses, you'll be sorry. <laughs> they thought we had gone to rear or something, you know. Right. Because the girls down there were, oh, they run right after you. But I never even looked at them. And uh, when, the, when the doctor examined me, 
He said, oh, you're okay. He was so was from, uh, you know, lying around, nothing to do. Uh, he, came, he took care of it for a couple of days. He said, okay, you can go. And then I went to, where the heck did I go? I can't remember where I went. Honest to God. Did, well, you, did, went, you, go, got, did oh, you go back to Boston? I went back to Fort Evans, got my $300 that this guy <laughs> took a train. They even gave me money for the train. Took the train to uh, North Station. And the, wow. And from the North Station, I walked maybe a little over half a mile where, the, where my family moved from the, the West End. From yep. the North yep. End to the West End. But they, I didn't know the, the, they were on Prospect Street, but I didn't know the number. So I was on the corner of Summer and, and, and Prospect Street. Oh. I'm looking around, hoping I, I recognize somebody. I looked up and there was a flag on the window with two stars. So help me God. I said, oh my God, maybe they're up there. I went up the stairs and tried to listen. I knocked on the door and I said, is anybody home? <laughs> oh, what a feeling that was. I cried, honest to God. What a feeling, see the family again. Oh, my mother was great. She was great. And that's the end. Oh, you want to know more? Well, uh, and that was what, uh, that was like in the middle of 1945? Yeah. Uh, yes, it was in the summer too. And, and from there, oh, yeah, my brother was working for Colonial Provision Company, my older brother. And, he, and one morning, I was, oh, no, I, ha I didn't finish school, so I had, I had uh, uh, one year to go. I took night, took a night school, night, a night, uh, yeah, night school, night school for one year, mm -hmm. and I completed that, but I didn't get the, the diploma, and so I, my brother Romeo, he says, wait, what are you doing? I said, oh, gee, kind of boring. He said, why don't you come down to Colonial? I might be able to get you a little job, you know, so the next morning he wakes me up, and I go down to Colonial, and this the man, Billy Barron, i never forget him. Nice guy. Oh, Billy Barron. <laughs> he said, who are you? I said, I'm, I'm Fred Lookman Tony, that's my brother Romeo. Oh, yeah, you're looking for a job. <laughs> you come with me then. He was a nice guy. Great. Oh, he, $8 a week. Wow. $8 a week. That must have felt pretty good. So, so you you were happy to be home, weren't you? Oh, was I happy? <laughs> and after a while, uh, I, w I got a job inside the plant. We, they made, you know, Colonial, they made all kinds of meats. And I became a foreman. And from a foreman, I became a... Uh, 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 I became one of the uh, a supervisor or supervisor. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, there was there were five of us. I was in charge of receiving, curing. Uh, the, it was called Department Ten. Uh, unloading freight cars, order the man. The uh, the. the the vice president, Mr. Robinowitz, he called me. He says, Mr. Locatoni, come, down, come, come down to my office, please. He'd have a book with all the numbers of the cars. You wouldn't believe how many cars. Nine cars a day. Freight cars. Freight cars. Yeah, big. Wow. And uh, he says, tomorrow you order this one, this one. And I call up, the, I forget his name. And I gave him the numbers of the car. And, 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 and they do, during the night, they change the old ones, take the empties out, and put the full ones in. When we go out there in the mornings, everything is ready. It's amazing, what a system. Big deal. So when you, when you first, when you came home from the war, did you talk about your war experience with anybody in your family or friends? 
Oh, I don't know. I might have been. You know, how, how, how can I tell them? I, I, I just wondered right. if you, I wondered if you, whether you talked about it much. Well, we, we, you couldn't say nothing when you wrote home, you know. You wrote, you wrote a letter home, you couldn't tell you nothing. You couldn't say where you were, what you're right. doing, nothing. Right, right. So all you had to say was, hi, hi, I'm fine, no problem, don't worry. Yeah, well, yeah, I told him uh, all of that. How I got hurt, uh, Purple Heart, and... Uh, the Dense Forest, we talked a lot about, and the Rhine River, and uh, we, we uh, I went, up, I went through the whole war again. Good, good. They enjoyed their war. They, they enjoyed listening to me. I, b I bet they did. Yeah, and I was only what, 24 years old. Amazing, mm -hmm. amazing. Did you, did you? join any part of the Army Reserve? Mm-mm. Mm -mm. I had nothing to do with the Army. That was it. <laughs> uh, the only thing I joined was a, uh, a, a club. Uh, you know, where people go in, uh, anybody. Uh, was it the American Legion or the Veterans of Foreign Wars or something like that? Pardon? Was it the VFW? No. American Legion? No, it was, nope. a, was a personal. Mm -hmm. Civilian. Got it. Yep. Yeah, and I didn't join no... No mi military. No, sir. I had enough of that. <laughs> but I wish I had, though, <laughs> in a sense. Because my brother Jimmy, first thing he did was join. He became a cook. She cooked. He cooked. he take a whole pork loin, 8, 10, 12 pounds, put it on a stool, screw there, and cook it, mm. and uh, of course it was it was he was a uh, in a in a, in a club by the you know he was a a member of uh, I can't remember the name, and boy they loved him. Mm. Of course in the in the army he was a cook too, and of course he cooked. And they must have loved him then too. Hmm? They must have loved him in the army. Oh yeah, <laughs> they wanted him, <laughs> but he had, he was he got the malaria. He caught malaria, oh. yeah, and that's why he came home. And they treated him for malaria for about, oh, quite a while. And he lived to be 84 years old. Wow. Nice guy. Have you ever, have you ever attended a reunion? No. Of your old army uh, uh -uh, group? Uh -uh. Nope, nope. Uh-uh. Okay, <laughs> okay. I wanted to forget everything. The only thing I joined was uh, uh, Knights of Col no. What did I do? The movement, honey. Uh, Masons? Huh? Lions Club? Knights Lions Club? Club. The, the Lions. Lions Club? Lions, yeah. Yep, yep. That's yep. the only club I joined. Yep. Good. So let me ask you a question. How important was it that you served in the army in World War II. It was, it was, Say that again. Uh, how important was it in your life that you had this mi military experience? Well, I can understand that the uh, discipline, uh, how to dress neat, how to take care of yourself. You learn quite a bit, you know? And we marched, <laughs> walked 25 miles a day. Oof. You must have been in great shape. A, I'm sorry, not a day. Uh, but once a month, we would go 25 miles. Start in the morning and get through at almost after dinner. I mean lunch. Uh. So, can you think of a what? What's the what's your most memorable experience from your time in the army? Or can you think of a memorable character or person, somebody that? Oh, somebody that got hurt? No, not uh, somebody that got hurt, or just somebody that you uh, well, still let me tell remember. You, when I got this hole in the head. I had a, one of my machine gunners 
was, he just come from, uh, <coughs> he just joined my outfit because I lost the one. His name was, uh, what was his name, honey, I told you about it. I don't, you don't, I don't remember you telling me the name. He was young, a very young man, right? 18 years old, 18. just come out of high school. Wow. Tom, 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 Tom. Tom something. And he came from Cleveland, Ohio. And the very first day, he got it. Mm. It was kind of dusk. And I was heating some water, uh, through the helmet, you know, that's the only thing we had. We had these little uh, gas little go, like a candle. We light them and, mm -hmm. we, and put them under the hat, the helmet, mm -hmm. and that heats the water. And we make tea, coffee, whatever you like. And he came, I, and when he came, I said, uh, Tom, dig in. We all have to, when, the minute we stop, we di dig a hole. That's the first thing they tell you, dig. So he come over, talk to me. I said, Tom, go back to your room and dig a hole, quick. And then, and then he went over to a tree. I never, no, 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 not near the tree. See, that's the worst place. Ah, and he kept digging, digging. He made himself a, a hole, and then he came over to talk to me again, and I heard the boom, 88, 88 from the Germans. And you can tell just where they're going to land because you hear them. I, and I listen. I says, Tom, hit the ground. He says, what? Hit the ground. I, and I, didn't, I was right there by, by my, uh, my own hole, and I didn't even go in the hole. I went where the mom was. <clears throat> and then the, the and the shell, oh, the poor kid. He got it. First day, eighteen years old. Boy, I cried. I I had to tell that story. I got tears in my eyes now. It's a tough story, but thank hmm? thank 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 you for sharing that with us. See the poor kid. Okay. So. Is there anything else that you'd like to say about your military service? Something that you'd like your family to know that maybe you haven't shared? Well, Just very any difficult. I was what? Two and a half years. <laughs> it's tough to, to remember everything. Oh, no. I mean, you've, and you've done a great job. You, huh? You've done a great job. You've told, I us, did. You've told us a lot. I, was, I kept in touch with my sister Esther and, and the family. And we would correspond once a week. And so one day I wrote a letter that says, gee, I miss your cooking. She was quite a cooker. Mm. And one day a package came. I said, look at Tony, you got a package. <laughs> oh, yeah. My sister. She's, oh. She sent me down. Uh, two pounds of macaroni, spaghetti, mm -hmm. uh, sauce, cheese. I don't know how she did it, but. <laughs> so I got the guys together, and I knew the cook. <laughs> <laughs> I said, uh, what was his name? Uh, uh, Rocco? Yeah, Rocco. Hey, Rocco, can I use your kitchen? Why? My, my sister sent me down some macaroni. Do I get any? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we cooked the macaroni, and I invited, whatever, what, eight people. That's enough. Otherwise, there would be nothing left. Right. I'd like to tell you one story, though. Okay? Please do. Please do. Uh, we were going through France, and there was a, uh, a beer factory where they made beer, and that was leveled. Leveled right down. It was an underground cellar, and then, and, and but the GIs don't miss a trick. I'm telling you, they can smell it. And they were, they went down there. The place was loaded with beer. Oh, taking uh, what's that beer? Heineken. 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 And that was gone. Just the empty cases. The only thing we found was five, four cases of keg. You know the little barrels? Yeah, that, uh, kegs. Four of those. <laughs> we, got them up in the, we got them up in the road, and I said to my driver, empty that truck. Get everything out of it. 
we had a, a carrier like with machine guns, equipment, mm -hmm. you know. I emptied the gun quick. And then, of course, the, the, the truck has a little uh, hole in the center where you put things. Yep. We put four barrels. <laughs> and then we put all the equipment. And we get to this town, and we, we, uh, we was, I forget if it was towards the end of the war or what. Uh, we got to this town in Germany. Uh, I don't know how we got there, but we were there. And we, we found a house. You're not supposed to go in the house unless, you, unless they check it, you know. Well, this place had a, a beautiful home. It looked like a mansion, you know. It was a richy place, and uh, they had chickens, eggs, and and the house was a gorgeous. What a beautiful home! Uh, I said, "Who's going to go in first? <laughs> and gee, the guy says, "Come on, let's go." They they wouldn't do nothing to this home. And we walked in, and oh, we I couldn't believe it. I thought it was a palace. Had to be a general place or something. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I'll tell you why. I found a beautiful uh, officer bayonet. It's, it's, it's about this long and about that wide. All diamonds and jewelry on it. Wow. It must have been worth a fortune. Of course I lost it anyway. Well, let me go back to the story. So we, we, we was uh, the captain was his birthday. We found out it was his birthday the, the next day. We got together, we killed some chickens, we got the eggs, we made some eggs. Uh, see, I don't forget, <laughs> we did quite a bit. And we got all the silverware. And I mean silverware and, ch and, and real china. Oh, what a place. And I went downstairs after that and he had Four or five, uh, uh, what do you call them, trunks? A cedar chest? Uh, no? Well, it's like a box. Anyway, four, maybe four. Yeah, about three, three, four. Three with stamps and one with some books. And I looked at it, <clears throat> and every stamp was so neat, just like, oh. I fell in love with them. I took a little of every one, of every page, I put, made two packages, and I mailed them home. Hmm. I got home, and I mailed one to my daughter, uh, my sister, and one to my uh, nephew, Ronnie. Ron Remember Ronnie? And I said to my sister, where are the stamps? She said, what stamps? She said, I mailed you some stamps, you and Ronnie. She said, well, I ain't never got any stamps. So I get in touch with Ronnie. Ronnie, will you get the stamps? What stamps? I said, some stamps. Mm. Never saw them. Oh. Must have been worth a fortune. Mm. Stamped neat. You, you, I couldn't believe it. All in books. Oh, oh my God, I fell in love with them. I wish so, I could go back there. <laughs> so did you have the beer with all that food? Yeah. Oh, uh, let me go back to the, the, to the, to the, we put a keg right in the middle of the table. <laughs> we, we, of course, here, they, they, we grabbed three, four tables, put them together, and there was what? Four, four, eight, eight, eight of us. Yeah, four on each side. And then I called the captain. I said, hey, captain, yeah, you got a few minutes, can you come up and see her? I got to show you something. What do you want, Luke? He was a little toughy, you know. Uh, please, come. I says, uh, I understand it's your birthday. So what? <laughs> well, we'd like to celebrate. Well, he finally came. When he saw the, de when he saw the, the table decorated, candles, all beautiful china, <laughs> and the linen, he couldn't get over. Where did you, you guys get this? <laughs> Down the cellar. Oh, and then they had a ham in the chimney. They, that's how they smoke them. Oh. They smoke this ham. Oh, gee. I'm telling you. 
He was so damn happy after he left. He was mad as hell when he came, though, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that was quite an experience. And That's then we great. had to leave, leave everything. We couldn't even clean up. I felt kind of bad. Just had to. Yeah. Well, it was a beautiful, beautiful home. Must have been worth a fortune. And we never went through the rooms, just the, the kitchen and the cellar. I don't know what that was upstairs. Maybe it was a pile of gold or something. I don't know. That was a great story. Thank you for sharing that with us. Huh? Thank you for sharing that story. That, that, that was great. Yeah. We had a lot of fun, though. Well, uh, I think we can wind this up now if, if, if you're basically set. Do you have anything else you'd like to share with us? Yeah. I think it's been a great interview. I could be here all day. That's about it. Okay, uh, well, I just want to thank you, Fred, Luke, and Tony, for your participation today. Uh, it was a wonderful interview. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. And I enjoyed doing it. It was, it was great. Okay, we can. You, you did Maureen. good.